Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of Wellness Wednesdays, where we share practical tools and techniques from wellness experts on the topics that are important to patients, survivors, and caretakers alike. I'm Erin Kuhn Krieger, and I'll be moderating today's session. And I am excited to be welcoming two uh, very well-versed women in the area of the cancer and uh, the executive directors of both Cancer Wellness Center as well as Rolf Pancreatic Cancer Foundation. Before we get started, though, I want to thank everybody for your support in our recent Peloton raffle, where we we're able to raise more than sixteen thousand dollars towards, excuse me, towards Ralph's mission to provide personal support to those affected by pancreatic cancer through tailored resources, connection, and education, and funding for early detection research. Now, next up, if you're hot for hoops or if you're known as a bracket buster, be on the lookout for our young professional boards. March Mania, and that's gonna be launching in a couple of weeks. Very exciting, I don't know. I always do my brackets every year and they're a bust. <laughs> now, a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Please ask questions throughout uh, in this comment section below. We will hold them all until the end to make sure that everybody's questions are answered and we're able to get to everybody. During this afternoon's Wellness Wednesday segment, we're excited to share the stage with our partner and one of our grant recipients, the Cancer Wellness Center. The executive directors from both organizations, Stacia Hart from Ralph and Nancy Bolzoni from CWC, will share about each organization and the importance of partnerships in the fight against pancreatic cancer and any cancer for that matter. So the format today is gonna be a little bit different. Each is gonna come on and talk a little bit about the organization, and then we'll have both of them come back on for some questions and additional conversation. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Stacia Hart. Pull you up here, Stacia. There you are. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, so Stacia has focused the past 20 years of her career in nonprofit management. She has always had a dedication to helping others, but everything changed when she found out her mom was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer at the very young age of 49. She sadly passed away four weeks later. The memory of her mother drives Stacia every day to end the battle of breast, to, excuse me, to end the battle of pancreatic cancer. She's the president and founder of the nonprofit Cancer Foundation, Healing with Every Step. And after seven successful years of fundraising, she realized the best way to make an, an even bigger difference was to join forces with Rolf. She joined the board in 2016, was the co-chair of the largest fundraiser, Speak Out for a Cure in 2017, and became the executive director of the foundation at the end of 2018. Stacia's passion continues to drive the foundation to the next level, supporting those affected by these disease and raising funds for early detection. Hello again, Stacia. Hi, thanks. The stage is yours. All right, so I thought, most people probably know this, but I thought I'd give a quick overview on how the Rolf Foundation became. So 22 years ago, Rolf Foundation was founded in honor of Michael Rolf, who sadly passed away to his battle of pancreatic cancer in just two short weeks. So the diagnosis was a shock, but more than that, the family was just horrified at the lack of information available. Through this horrific grief that many of us have also gone through, families and friends of Rolf were committed to creating a community to provide personal support to those affected by pancreatic cancer through tailored resources, connections, and education, and also funding early detection. The hope was that others will not have to go through the pain and suffering that Michael went through and his loved ones went through. Over the years, Rolf has grown into more than anyone could have imagined. Rolf Foundation became and continues to be a family to over 25,000 people to date for all of those that are affected by pancreatic cancer. We focus on patients, on families, on their loved ones. No matter where they are in the process, we're here for them always because we unfortunately get it and we've all been there. The sticky statistic is that 12 to 15% of pancreatic cancer is genetic. And most people aren't looking for it because they don't know um, that they're at risk. And so that's our job. Rolf Foundation understands the crucial information to educate those in the community on the risk factors, their symptoms, and also on treatment options. And most of all, we're connecting with patients and families to specialized doctors and resources so they can get the help they need right away. And as we all know, that pancreatic cancer doesn't wait for anybody. We pride ourselves on getting to know our patients, their families as individuals, 
and we realize that everyone's cancer experience is unique. So we work with each patient according to their specific needs. With amazing partners like Cancer Wellness Center, we're able to provide those tailored options to best meet their needs. So prior to the pandemic, Rolf hosted educational symposiums every year. Since this is not an option right now, we needed to find a way to connect with our patients and families in a different way so everyone continues to have that fighting chance. From there, that's how Wellness Wednesday was born. Wellness Wednesday shares practical wellness tools and techniques from experts on topics important to the patients, our survivors, and our caretakers. We cover everything from pain management, genetics, nutrition, mental health and wellness, exercise, and there's just a lot that we can cover to support others. It's a way to gather the community to inform and sometimes even distract all of us in the day to day. What I've learned a lot in this process is that education is power. The more information we can push out about this horrifying disease, the better chance of survival in the future for everyone. By joining forces with our amazing partners at Cancer Wellness Center, we can expand our reach on topics, support a larger community, and we're also just super excited to be working with them. Great, thanks, Stacia. I'm gonna put you in the, in the back room and to bring Nancy out. So now I'd like to welcome Cancer Wellness Center's Executive Director, Nancy Balzani. Nancy has been with Cancer Wellness Center for 15 years, serving in a wide variety of roles, and since 2011, has led the organization as the Executive Director. Prior to joining the center, she spent time in the financial services industries in an operational role for small businesses. It's her driving force to remain true to the center's mission, which she's gonna share with us now. Welcome, Nancy. Thank you, Erin. So um, I too want to take a few minutes and uh, first want to say thank you so much to the Rolf Foundation for offering me this opportunity to share a bit more about the Cancer Wellness Center. And um, I'll start just like Stacia did with a little history. Um, about 32 years ago, um, there were two women working in a medical office for a physician that they really greatly admired. And unfortunately, he passed away and they were looking for some way to do something to honor him. And they often saw cancer patients in his practice and recognized as he did, um, sort of a physician ahead of his time, that there was really a gap in cancer care. Um, physicians focused on the medical aspects, but we all know um, just from anecdotally as well as research that now supports the fact that there's really a tremendous psychosocial and emotional impact when someone is diagnosed with cancer and not just for the cancer patient, but for the, the families as well. So with that in mind, um, our two founders, Patsy Winokur and Judy Brannon, founded the Cancer Wellness Center back in January of 1989. Um, at the time, it was um, a handful of support groups, vitally needed support groups, and um, I think they were in about 800 feet of donated space. And through their careful guidance and passion um, over the years, it has grown to um, we now sit in a 13,000 square foot office and our offerings range from our clinical um, supportive services to education, wellness, mindfulness, um, all sorts of supportive care. So um, really just an amazing uh, trajectory for the organization. And despite what we hear in the news about advances in cancer care for many um, cancers, uh, cancer is still the leading cause of death. The second leading cause of death in the U.S. So um, while we both, I think Rolf would agree, we wish we did not need to exist, but we are really passionate about being here and supporting people through these difficult journeys. So how does Cancer Wellness Center fill the gap? So um, we know that uh, cancer patients experience a lot of emotional distress during um, cancer treatment, and so we're here to fill that um, and support them. So we have two sides of the house, as I'll call it. Um, we have a clinical services, which include support groups and counseling, and those are available to cancer patients as well as caregivers. Um, the range of people that we serve are children all the way up to older adults. Um, we do have eligibility requirements, which are um, any, it's for any cancer patient or caregiver five years or less post-treatment. Um, additionally, we offer an incredible array of wellness and education programs. So those could be anything from exercise to mindfulness to meditation 
nutrition counseling. Um, we have a couple of nutrition group programs that we initiated, um, Mindful Kitchen and Weight Loss for Wellness, which focus on the, um, the nutritional aspects of dealing with cancer. And for pancreatic cancer patients in particular, that is often an issue because their digestive tract is impacted. So we're really happy to be able to offer those services to pancreatic can cancer patients as well. Um, the, since the pandemic hit, um, the, our services have had to shift, um, and we're really proud of that shift that we made to virtual offerings. Um, what we understood and learned was that actually it has expanded our reach in ways that we never thought possible. Um, the Rolf Pancreatic Networking Group is a great example. Um, pancreatic cancer strikes people all over the Chicagoland area. And we knew that it was difficult often for those patients to get to us here at our Northbrook location. What we're finding now with um, the virtual offering is you can be miles and miles away and still join in in our groups. Um, so we know now that um, we, as we look forward to 2021 and the hope that we can be back in person, we fully intend on maintaining that virtual offering um, for those very reasons. Um, we don't wanna just be able to serve those that are close enough to get to us. Um, we also know sometimes patients are just tired, they're immunocompromised, they don't wanna be in a group, um, maybe transportation is an issue. So all of those barriers have disappeared through this use of technology. So we're super excited about that. Um, as far as our partnership with Rolf, um, we have a deep history. I think we go back Gosh, at least 15 years. And um, I believe um, our two founders, Patsy Winokur and Judy Rolf, um, knew each other personally, as well as shared this passion for, um, you know, incredible best in class care for patients and those who love and care for them. So um, with that, we're going to talk a little bit more about our partnership, um, both Stacia and I together. So I'm going to hand it back to Erin. Great. Thank you so much, Nancy. What I what I really enjoyed about both of those setups is the personalized approach that both organizations go towards, the emphasis on the support and on the education, because we all know, as, as Stacia said, education is power. And it's, it's so meaningful, especially in days where you could Google anything um, and it could take you down a rabbit hole that you don't need to go down to. So thank you for um, what you're doing. So let's talk more about um, the how and why Cancer Wellness Center and, and Rolf came together. Stacia, do you wanna get us started? Sure, so we recognized that there was a need for additional support when patients and families connected with us. When people call us, they are usually in crisis and they need support across the board. In addition to doctor referrals, they really truly need um, professionals that understand what they're going through, someone that understands the background of cancer. And so Cancer Wellness Center is incredible for that because they were able to pull together first a group with pancreatic cancer, which was really, really helpful, but then also they have an array of amazing other services, which Nancy's talked about and she'll continue to talk about, to really help people um, press ahead and not have to worry so much about you know that aspect. Fantastic, Nancy. Will you chime in as well? Sure. And you know one of the things that's interesting, um, Stacia talked about how people come in crisis, and with pancreatic, that's almost a given. But what we also find um, at Cancer Wellness Center when we're doing intake is that people, when you talk crisis, they they've sort of hit rock bottom. And one of the things that we want to communicate is there are tremendous benefits to joining in and partaking in our services, even if you're not in that crisis moment, if you feel like everything is, is going at least as planned. Um, and, and not that you're worrying about preparing for you know, a crisis to occur, but the fact that there's, there's lots of things that you can be doing even when you feel like you've got it all under control, like talking to a nutritionist or being part of that networking group. You just never know what you might learn, a tip, a trick, a new treatment, um, something like that. There's, there's a lot of benefit to um, availing yourselves of the services well before you hit that crisis point. And I'd also encourage, um, we know the impact of um, cancer on the family members as well. And it's equally important for them to seek out those services too, um, to make sure that they're in the best position and they're communicating well with the, with the patient and 
um, all of those things that can really support and give you the best result um, and, you know, to live better while you're living with cancer. Absolutely. And I think there's also power in the collaboration. You know, I think a lot of times people will look at organizations and think, well, they're competing, they're, you know, how could they work together? And to be able to really put the patients and their families and the caretakers first um, says a lot. So let's talk more about the benefits of the collaboration. Stacia, you want to kick this part off? Yeah. And so to add on to that, there, you know, because pancreatic cancer seems small to some, um, there's a lot of uh, cancer organizations that don't have something specialized specifically for pancreatic cancer, which really, truly, it, it's, it's, I hate to say it this way, but it really is, it's its own monster. And so you need someone that really understands it. And so the fact that Cancer Wellness Center, Center was willing to do that um, so that people can relate with each other, nobody gets it as much as someone that's going through it. I, every cancer is so different. So this is, it, it's really, truly important important for the patients and for the families to get that support that they need and to be surrounded by people that understand. Absolutely. Nancy, what would you like to add in there? Um, one important point um, that we, we often hear, you know, there's lots of therapists available and, and people out there that could, that you could seek out services. Number one, um, I want to point out our services are free of charge as are the Rolf um, offerings. And, um, but what really sets us apart is our, our team works every day with cancer patients. So they're really well versed. And we do have somebody who is dedicated to the pancreatic networking group. So they understand it, they know the doctors, et cetera. And then as far as other benefits of the, of the um, partnership, what we found, um, you know, I, I was reflecting as I was preparing for this that really Rolf is, is a model for us. And, and we've actually gone so far as this, we're going to create a template of how we want our other partnerships to, um, you know, be successful. And, and Rolf is, is a great example. Um, we, we collaborated on the networking group, the support group early on, but then there was this recognition that the patients needed more. Um, and so, you know, Rolf agreed with, with conversation that, that they could support not just the support group, but you know, the counseling, the individual counseling, nutrition programming, meditation, mindfulness, all the stress reduction services that we offer. So that was fantastic. What Rolf brings to us is that access to those experts when we do an education program or a lecture series. Um, it, it's been incredible for us that they open those doors, make those connections, because it's often hard to get the attention of these physicians. Um, and then together, what we've been able to do in terms of driving attendance and awareness has has increased, you know, sometimes 50% in attendances and what we could get. So um, just really wonderful benefits. And and we, like I said, this really, as I reflected, is just a model um, partnership. Definitely. And, and, you know, that each group focuses not just on the patient, and they realize that it does expand out and, and not on solely the cancer piece. You know, there's all these other pieces that you had mentioned from nutrition to mindfulness to 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 allow people to be able to live their life while they're going through this. And so I think, um, you know, I think that that's an, another thing to be pointed out. Um, how about any other collaborations that either organization that you've that you've worked with that you've found beneficial both as the organization and then for the, the patients you serve? You know, I think, as we said earlier, knowledge is power. And so especially in particular with this disease and other diseases that are, you know, um, don't get a lot of awareness, the more information we can push out, the better chance we have of people being aware of it so that they can, you know, check themselves and make sure that they understand what the risk factors and the symptoms are. Um, you know, it's, it's hard, especially even a cancer wellness center, probably to know every single cancer out there and how someone's truly affected. So to be able to be a specialist in that field and for us to be able to guide people and help them and let them recognize how critically important it is and refer them to where they need to go. It, it really is. It, it makes a huge difference. And, and I would add to that, you know, it, it also the, the, the virtual offerings have had. Yeah probably a significant impact in particular with pancreatic patients who are often what we find with the networking group in particular, the support group is, and, and all of our services is that it was a big barrier because they're often not feeling well. You know, as, as we all know for pancreatic treatment is rough 
and um, you often don't feel good. And, and then you couple it with what's happening out our windows right now with the, the cold. And, and if you're not feeling well, that's just another reason not to seek out the services. And, and we found that there are fewer cancellations, more people attending because of those virtual offerings. So we're, we're really excited about that. And then I also would be remiss to not point out that, um, you know, we do have um, bereavement services as well so that when people lose someone. Um, the other thing that our staff has recognized is we've actually been able to counsel people, offer counseling for people who are inpatient. Um, it was too big of a barrier in the past because we couldn't be on site without being essentially a staff at a hospital and so it just wasn't a possibility but now all we need is a smartphone or a tablet and we can be talking with those those patients and their families wherever they're at. Mm -hmm. if, inpatient or even end of life. Um, so really some powerful work um, that, that is happening and thanks to technology. The technology during this time has, has truly been incredible. Let's, let's dig deeper into the services for both organizations. Uh, can you give our, our viewers more of an overview of the, the types of services that are offered? Stacia, you wanna start? Sure. So. I consider Rell Foundation, obviously, in, a in addition to raising funds for early detection, we really are a compass, a map for those diagnosed or those who have gone through the process. We will help anyone in any way, wherever they've come from, whether they're newly diagnosed or they're looking for clinical trials um, or they need um, new treatment options or they want a second opinion with the doctor. Um, so we will guide them however is necessary in whatever way works for them um, we don't have there's not there's not a, a an outline when people call it's really whatever they need we help them with um, and so that's that's been really really great for people and then also of course to refer out it's we're just we're a huge resource to people but we are there no matter what um, and that door never closes that's great and, and I'll add on just to give a couple of highlights because I think I've kind of covered, you know, the, the breadth of our programming, but, um, you know, we do have a child specialist on staff. Um, what we often find is that um, parents are looking for the right words to talk to their children. It may not be the child that's diagnosed, but if a parent or grandparent is, and in, in particular with pancreatic, which is difficult to manage, um, what are those words? What's appropriate at a given age? And so we do have an expert on our staff that can work with them. Um, we have young adult programming. Um, we have a Spanish speaking therapist now on staff. So we really do have some expertise. And in particular, again, I'll, I'll bring back to pancreatic. I know often eating and food is difficult. And we do have an oncology dietitian on our staff who works a lot with um, pancreatic patients. So that's super important. And there's some group pro programming as well as as one on one. Um, and then we also we will we'll also cross refer back to um, Rolf when somebody is looking, you know, we don't make recommendations for doctors um, because we just don't have the breadth of knowledge there. So we will refer to back to Rolf and that's been a tremendous resource. And that's also part of what we do. I, I liked um, Stacia, your, your analogy of a compass, because even though we offer quite a breadth of, of services, we often find ourselves looking to refer out as well. And, and we have an intake coordinator that is really good at, at connecting people to services if we can't help them in some way. That's, that's great. And, and you know, to have the different levels and, and different subsets is, is really important. I had a friend who was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and they had young children and nobody was able to give them the resource um, at first to how they could get through or what they should say to the kids. They said, here's a coloring book. Um, and, you know, that wasn't very helpful. So I'm, I'm so happy to hear that the breadth of services is, is so vast. We talked that the, the services aren't just for the cancer patients. Can you talk, talk a little bit more about how you're servicing the different subsets? Um, you know, the, are there support groups that are specifically for caretakers and, and relatives and, and Stacia, how, how that works within Ralph as well? Yeah, I mean, we will support people even after the fact too. And so I think in terms of Rolf, none of us are professionals in that field, but everybody that's a part of our foundation has been affected in some way, shape or form. And a lot of the times you just want to connect with someone that's been through it. You just want to talk through it. You just want to hear um, or just relate. And it's, it's very helpful because it's such a tragic 
uh, time of your life and it happens so quickly that you just, you need someone that's just there for you. Um, so if that's what somebody's looking for, that's how we'll help them. And then, uh, you know, in any other resource that we can guide or offer, you know, genetic testing has become a really big one. People want to make sure that, um, you know, they're watching themselves, that they're making sure that they're taken care of. Um, so that's a big part of it too. So anything that anyone needs, we kind of just sprawl out and help and help. And I'll add on, you know, we um, we have someone on our staff who is is particularly interested in, in the caregiver role and, and runs some programming. So we do have a support group and we do have some specialized programming. And um, I watched a presentation she did one time and I, I don't have the statistics, but there is research that supports that actually sometimes the at times at points in the cancer journey, the stress level is reported higher for the caregiver because they're expected to not be stressed. You know, all the all the attention and resources go to the cancer patient and they're supposed to remain stoic and, you know, be there at all times, all day. And then what we also, I've learned from the people on our staff that often um, communication between caregiver, especially if it's spouses, between caregiver and patient really break down because of this fear of expressing their fears. And again, you know, being able to acknowledge those and 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 really everybody starts, it, it, it sort of starts separating people. Um, and so it's really critically important to the health of the relationship, the journey, et cetera, that those caregivers get support. Absolutely. And, and I think as Stacia, as you said as well, that having people who have lived it and have gone through, at, at the end of the day, we all want to feel hurt and we wanna feel that we're not alone. And so it seems like these support groups and, and the referrals and even being on a call, um, listening is, is so important throughout this whole process. How about um, the referral and intake process? Nancy, can you share a little bit about what that looks like over at Cancer Wellness Center? Sure. Um, it was interesting. I'll start uh, a couple, about a year or two ago, I had a board member um, who had referred people to the center. And, and you know, he, he, he said to me one time, he said, Nancy, so, so what, what happens when, you know, I refer somebody? And I said, well, you know, we, we do an intake. And they, he's like, yeah, but no, but what happens? Literally. <laughs> so I really understood that, you know, people intake is such a clinical word. So what literally happens is, is somebody will either walk in our doors or in these days, you know, call us on the phone and, and they'll say, you know, I've been impacted by cancer. And what we do is we immediately connect them with Katie Hull, who's our intake coordinator. And Katie will spend anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes and, and get some basic demographic information from them and then talk about where they're at. And often we'll find or she'll find that people have heard about us in some way and they they may have an idea of what service they want but then upon the conversation so for example pancreatic patient may come to us and just say i need counseling i'm in crisis whatever and then she'll connect them to the networking group or if you know if they're a caregiver is in stress she'll connect them to caregiver services so it's through that conversation and um, she often finds that when people come with an idea of what the services are that they are looking for, in fact, they avail themselves of something different or additional. So um, it's really important. Um, and we made the decision to um, have a full-time intake coordinator a couple years ago because we realized we really wanted a very consistent way in which we engage with people and making sure that they are connected. And, and Katie does a wonderful job. And then as well, Katie would be the person if for example, they were looking for a physician. Katie is well informed about Rawl Foundation and their capabilities. So she would absolutely also refer out to as well. So we make it as easy as possible. And um, and then, but at the same time, we wanna make sure it's a rich discussion. So we make them aware of all of our, our, our um, ways that we can support them. Great. Stacia, how does that look at Rawl? So for us, it's it's um, it's a little different because anyone can just they can call in and we can help um, in however they need. You know, it doesn't have to be necessarily someone that's in crisis. It can be someone that um, is just looking for a little additional support. It can be someone that's looking for palliative care. Um, the nutritional aspect is a huge one that we get a lot. And I'm so I refer constantly to Cancer Wellness Center about that. Um, I think what's important for us is we 
talk to the person and we refer out as much as we possibly can for whatever they need right away. And we make those phone calls too. So I would connect with Katie um, immediately if needed, if there's something that someone needed right away, especially in terms of, um, as you said, the caregivers, it's, it's a really big deal. So um, there's no forms to complete on our end. We're, we're kind of just taking in this information and trying to push it out as much as we can. Excuse me, do you find that people um, don't know what they need when they call? Oh, they're 100%. afraid to call. And so what would you tell those folks um, to how, how to help themselves? Yeah, I mean, you know, it depends on where they are in their journey. Um, but a lot of the times we just we let them talk first and figure out what they need. A lot of the times they um, you, you, you kind of you, you just start giving them ideas, giving them recommendations of different things they might be interested in. It's they can't lock in that information at that time because there's so much. So we hear them, we talk through it. And then after we're done with the call, we push the information out through email. And a lot of the times we follow up too to check in and see if they need any other help. Do they need us to help connect with them with anything? Um, so it's, it's, um, it's important. And I would just add, you know, encourage to call, 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 you know, and connect. Because again, going back to you don't need to be in crisis. There's lots of resources that can really help improve your your you know your life while you're living with cancer. And mm -hmm. and you know, in my mind, there's there's no drawback. There's no negative. It's it's all positive. Mm -hmm. That rolls yeah. into our next question, which is how would you recommend that patients, families, caretakers best take take advantage of your services? Yes, yeah, do you want to go ahead? Sure. Um, so, you know, there's a couple different ways. You can call the center, and I'll, I'll say the number. It's 847-509-9595. Um, you can also go to our website. There's actually a calendar where you can click through and um, learn a little bit more about programs that we're offering. Um, and, you know, it really is just simple as simple as making a phone call or going to our website, which is cancerwellness.org. Um, so it, it really, we, we make it as simple and as seamless as possible. And again, just take a look. You just never know um, what might pique your interest. And um, I, I, we do outcomes evaluation on, uh, in particular, um, regularly on our clinical programming, so our support groups and counseling, and then um, for each education and wellness program. And we get 90 to 95 percent positive, you know, feedback on very specific criteria. So. What it's saying is, is that when people do engage, they're very happy and feel like they they have learned something that has helped them live better. So again, Fantastic. just no downside. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, and for us, it's call as soon as you can. The the you know the sooner we can connect, the you know the better chance you have, um, in in all aspects, you know, to um, get the support that you need. That's great. No. Both organizations are free of charge to patients, families, caretakers. Let's talk about funding. <laughs> how, how is that possible? Well, big thank you to Rolf Foundation, <laughs> who funds the Cancer Wellness Center. And, um, you know, that that is, um, you know, as, as with any nonprofit, always the struggle. But um, we find at Cancer Wellness Center, um, we probably get 80% of our funding is from individuals. And um, while we get corporate giving, it's often because of a personal connection. While it may be written on a corporate check, it really is that, that personal connection with people. And then we get about another 20% of our funding, maybe you know slightly above lately, but um, from organizations like Rolf, from foundations that support the work that we do. So super grateful for any donations. And we run events all year long. And um, you know, we'll be, we're kicking off the next event series and um, season and, of course, looking like virtual again. Um, but we're well prepared this year to to make that happen. So great. Yeah. And similar to Cancer Wellness Center, we are 100 percent donor driven. So um, we really rely on our loyal donors and to you know keep them informed so that they understand how critical it is to support not only the early detection piece, but also to continue to help these patients get the support that they need um, right away. So we really, we couldn't do it without our donors. 
That's, that's and, and I just want to add on real quick too that that's another example of what a great collaboration we have and partnership we have. Um, Stacia and I were in touch several times over this past year talking about our virtual events, best practices. Um, we went ahead with one of, I think both of our events were ahead of yours and, you know, absolutely sharing best practices and successes because we, we both know how difficult the road is. We don't compete. I don't ever think about that. We're, our number one goal is to make sure that we're, we're doing everything that we can to support those cancer patients and their families. Yeah, full circle. And it shows, it shows. So I'd imagine because of this past year with the pandemic and everything going on that the funding was impacted, um, you know, the financial impacts. Can you talk how that did or didn't impact the, the services and, and what you were able to do? It's, it sounds like you both did an incredible job of, to use an overused term during this phrase, uh, pivot. And- um, <laughs> We never wanna hear that word again. No. <laughs> <laughs> and persevere. Exactly. Um, yeah. But, but honestly, uh, you know, it's, it is a challenge, especially within this arena where it's the, the cycle is short. And so you, you've got to go quick to action. So yeah. can you each talk about how you were able to shift your mindset and, and shift um, prior responsibilities and, um, you know, goals and, and ideas to be able to accommodate for it? Yeah, and I think Nancy had, you know, said it earlier that um, the virtual aspect has really opened a, a ton of doors to patients and families. When you're going through this, you're exhausted, you're tired. The last thing you want to do is get in a car, get on a train and try to go somewhere um, to be able to have that support at your fingertips by just a click of a button was really uh, helpful to our community for sure. You know, the majority of our fundraising efforts are or were in person. And so it took a lot. And um, we had to really figure out how to reinvent the wheel and how to continue to connect with people so that we didn't lose those those patients and those supporters and the people that really continue to need that help. And so similar to Wellness Wednesday and Cancer Wellness Center, we're always trying to find alternatives to continue to support and guide. Um, so that's kind of a big aspect of ours of what we did in terms of COVID. And, and I would add also um, very much the same, just as we had to learn new ways of delivering our programs, we had to find new ways to connect with our donors. And what I'm finding now, and I, I'd like to, you know, offer a call to action for those who might be watching, um, you know, the pandemic, um, a lot of strife in our country this past year. And I feel like people are looking for ways to make a difference. And just like I, you know, both station, I encourage people um, when they're impacted by cancer to just pick up the phone and call. Um, if you're on that, you, you're in that moment where you're trying to think about ways you can give back, absolutely reach out to um, Stacia or I. Um, if you're passionate about cancer, we'll join you and we'll find ways to um, figure out how you can make a difference within each of our organizations because there are many opportunities. Yes, we need fundraising, um, but there there are small and big ways to accomplish that. I know the other thing that both Station and I talk about all the time is just raising awareness. Um, you know, it's amazing how many times people, you know, I'll ask, I, I've had a few friends and people have reached out about pancreatic and I say, do you know about the Rolf Foundation? No, I haven't heard of that. So, you know, just raising awareness is huge too. But if, if you're thinking about making a difference in this world, especially when it comes to cancer and you're passionate, um, reach out and call Stacia or I. We'd be happy to talk to you about different ways you can engage. Absolutely. Now, as things are starting to open up with the distribution of the <clears> vaccine <throat> and, and as we're able to do things, some things more in person, what? How will your services look? Will you continue the virtual aspect of it too? Are you gonna? Is it? Will it be a hybrid, or, or have you gotten that far? I know a lot of this is, is yeah. a playbook. I think, and I've talked to a lot of people. I think everyone's really anxious about what the quote unquote new normal will look like after all this. It's been such a stressful time um, for everyone, and especially the patients going through chemo treatments alone at the hospitals and the isolation. And it's just been so horrific for them. But I also think that, you know, there's going to be this other huge aspect of kind of this um, post-traumatic stress of uh, being around other people. And what does that look like? And are, you know, are you safe or unsafe? So we're, we're going to, you know, feel out the waters big time and really try to 
listen and hear what um, you know our patients and families and supporters need and um, take it one step at a time. And um, the same for us as well. Um, you know, we're, we're, we've got a transition team in place to talk about, you know, a plan for when we are back face to face. It will still be masked and safe and whatever until the time we'll follow CDC guidelines. Um, but we know for certain that we will continue to offer virtual services as well as potentially hybrid services. Um, we're working with a funder to help us with some technology needs um, to invest a little bit more um, in, in some of the camera work that would be necessary when we've got groups in particular, um, and then figuring out space in our building um, for and technology, you know, the accessibility of laptops in private spaces for the, our therapists to do virtual work. But um, we know for certain there are people who have engaged this past year that would not be able to physically get to our location because we're just too far. We have people from yeah. rural communities we're finding. And just wanted to share too, we're super excited. Um, we um, were able to get licensure for one of our therapists up in Wisconsin, which is our most frequent referral because as you know, um, when they come to our building, we can offer services um, through our licensed therapists. But if they're in a different state, our therapists have to be licensed in those states. So we're kind of looking at surrounding areas. But I, I think again, you know, pancreatic cancer patients are, are, are a perfect example. They don't all reside up near Northbrook or in the city, you know, they're all over the Chicagoland area. And so I see that in particular, um, just absolutely being virtual so that everyone can, or hybrid at a minimum. So people can from all locations can access. And plus with the likely, you know, difficulties just physically attending, you know, and leaving their home. This way they can, you know, with a phone yeah. or a tablet, tune in. And I told Nancy the other day, it's been so nice to be able to refer people to Cancer Wellness Center and not have to worry about the commute or getting there and just be able to pick up the phone and know that they can do something virtually. It makes a really big difference. We've been able to help a lot more people. We did a recent survey um, with our participants about our virtual offerings and 28% of them said that they would prefer forever virtual offerings. So now that was also at a point in time and we hope that as people get more comfortable, but my guess is some of those were people speaking to the fact that they would, they're just too far away. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What other initiatives do we have to look forward to in 2021? Stacia, I know um, Savina and um, uh, is it Katie are working on yeah. um, programming and I, I will say I'm not up to date. So if you have that information to share, because I do know. No, we I know that we're going to, I know Katie and Savina are amazing. Um, we're definitely trying to do things quarterly, which is fantastic. Just that helps us broaden our reach, you know, amongst patients across the board. Um, and we're going to continue to find, um, you know, utilizing both resources from pancreatic cancer and, you know, at Can Cancer Wellness Center, um, you know, listening to our patients, listening to our families, figuring out what they want to hear about and utilizing that to um, make a bigger impact. Fantastic. Is there anything else about the organizations or about the time right now that, that we haven't covered that you'd like to share? I feel like we covered it all. I'm just so thankful that we are partners with Cancer Wellness Center. We couldn't, you know, we wouldn't be able to do what we do best without them. Um, they're really, truly incredible and they make a huge difference. And I will say um, Rolf's passion for supporting pancreatic patients is inspiring. Well, you both are very inspire inspirational to me and I really appreciate you sharing all of these great insights on Ralph Foundation, on Cancer Wellness Center and how you're working together to make sure that patients, their families, the caretakers, the community is feeling supported and educated and, and has exactly what they need uh, when they need it, which we all know is, is key. Um, so thank you again for participating. For those who are catching the replay of this, if you want to write replay within the comment section when you ask your questions, we'll be able to get back to you uh, with answers to those. And we'll be back next month and hope you'll join us when we partner with Lily Horowitz, the owner of The Core Method, where she'll discuss the importance of building a strong core, especially post-surgery, along with the benefits that come with it. And we'll also have some uh, an exercise routine to, to boot. So don't forget, right. if, you, if you have ideas for future Wellness Wednesdays, be sure to comment below or send us an email at info at ralphfoundation.org. And on behalf of Ralph Pancreatic Cancer Foundation and our friends over at Cancer Wellness Center, we appreciate you joining us this afternoon. 
We hope you stay warm, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you back next month. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye, everybody.